hey guys welcome back so today's video is all about biomechanics of temporomandibular joint part 1 which would be about opening and closing of the jaws so basically in this video we will be seeing how various structural components and muscles help to carry out the mechanics of the opening and closing of the jaw harmoniously so let's move ahead so before moving on to the procedure of opening and closing of the jaws let's learn the functions of some of the important components which plays an important role in the opening and closing of the jaws so among that first and foremost is lateral pterygoid muscle so we all know that lateral pterygoid muscle has two parts superior belly and inferior belly of lateral pterygoid among that superior lateral pterygoid has an insertion into the articular disc of the temporomandibular joint so the superior lateral pterygoid muscle attaching to the articular disc it keeps the disc properly aligned with the condyle during function whereas inferior lateral pterygoid it is inserted at the neck of the condyle so this inferior lateral pterygoid muscle it has a function of pulling the condyle forward so whenever the jaw opens the inferior lateral pterygoid it gets contracted and it pulls the condyle forward next the bilaminar zone bilaminar zone has two fibrous retrodiscal lamina which projects from it first is superior retrodiscal lamina which is responsible for the positioning of the disc in protrusive movement whereas the inferior retrodiscal lamina it is attached to the neck of the condyle so superior retrodiscal lamina uh, it has a function of pulling the disc posteriorly so whenever the jaw opens along with the condyle the disc traverses forward so the function of the retrodiscal lamina is it does not allow the disc to move anteriorly so whenever the jaw opens it gets contracted and it pulls the disc posteriorly next the muscles of mastication we all know that there are elevators and depressors so as the name suggests elevators they elevate the condyles and mandible and hold them firmly against the eminence whereas depressors they depresses the condyle and they contracts at the time of the opening of the jaw so this is the basic resting position of the mandible so whenever the uh, mandible is at rest at that time the condyle is at, at at its uppermost position against the steepest part of the slope whereas the disc it is present slightly on the front of the condyle so at resting position now uh, from here just remember that whichever blocks are colored uh, green those structures are relaxed whereas the blocks which are colored red are contracted now coming on to the resting position of the mandible so now henceforth whichever blocks are colored green those structures are under relaxation whereas the blocks which are colored red those structures are under contraction now at the resting position the condyle is at its uppermost position against the part of the slope whereas the disc which is present above the condyle it is present slightly on the front of the condyle the superior lateral pterygoid and the superior retrodiscal lamina is relaxed whereas the inferior lateral pterygoid muscle it is slightly contracted as its function is to pull the condyle forward so at the resting position the condyle is slightly pulled forward because of the contraction of lateral pterygoid muscle whereas the muscles of mastication such as elevator muscles and depressor muscles they are in a resting state of postural contraction so coming on to the opening of the jaw so during opening when condyle is pulled down along the slope at that time the superior retrodiscal ligament it becomes active because when the jaw opens along with the condyle the disc also traverses forward so the function of the superior retrodiscal ligament is to stop the forward movement of the disc and to pull the disc backwards or posteriorly 
so whenever the jaw opens and disc traverses forward superior retrodiscal ligament becomes active to prevent the disc from being displaced anteriorly during the mouth opening whereas the condyle is pulled forward by contraction of the inferior lateral pterygoid muscle so the inferior lateral pterygoid muscle which was under contraction at the time of resting position it gets contracted further to pull the condyle forward at the time of mouth opening whereas the superior lateral pterygoid muscle is relaxed as before now among the muscles of mastication elevators are relaxed whereas the depressors undergoes contraction because as the jaw opens depressors becomes active and undergo contraction condyle when further reaches at the crest eminence in that case the superior retrodiscal ligament undergoes more of more of the contraction the reason is same to retract the disc posteriorly on the condyle and to control the alignment of the disc on opening whereas the inferior lateral pterygoid again undergoes more of contraction as it pulls the condyle forward and superior lateral pterygoid is relaxed as before among the muscles of mastication elevators are relaxed and depressors are under contraction now the thing to be noted is through whole of the opening procedure the superior lateral pterygoid stays passive so at some of the other point superior lateral pterygoid and the superior retrodiscal ligament the action of these two structures are opposite whenever one goes under relaxation the other gets contracted what if both contracts together what if superior lateral pterygoid as well as the superior retrodiscal lamina if contracts together now in figure we can see whenever the jaw opens at that time the superior retrodiscal lamina it gets contracted just to pull the disc posteriorly and avoid the disc to traverse forward so in that case if superior lateral pterygoid also contracts now if both the structure contracts together in that case there would be excessive stretching of the articular disc and this excessive stretching of the articular disc may harm the disc so that's why both the superior lateral pterygoid as well as the superior retrodiscal lamina does not undergo contraction at the same time to prevent the articular disc from damage now in short during mouth opening what all structures which contracts are superior retrodiscal lamina depressors and inferior lateral pterygoid muscle whereas the structures which relaxes are elevators and superior lateral pterygoid muscle moving on to start of the closure so the end of the opening and start of the closure at that time the condyle is at somewhere at the crest of the eminence at that time now whenever the closure starts in that case now the superior lateral pterygoid muscle starts contracting now why it starts contracting is because the main purpose of superior lateral pterygoid muscle is to hold the disc forward because at resting position the condyle when it is in contact with the most steepest part of the eminence the disc which is present between the condyle and the glenoid fossa it is always placed slightly forward why it is placed slightly forward is just because of the superior lateral pterygoid muscle the superior lateral pterygoid muscle it always keeps the disc slightly forward above the condyle so hence at the start of the closure now superior lateral pterygoid muscle starts undergoing contraction whereas inferior lateral pterygoid muscle it undergoes relaxation to allow the condyle to pull to get pulled back and up the slope by the elevator muscles and the superior retrodiscal lamina its relaxation begins because the disc anyways is coming posteriorly with the condyle once the jaw starts closing 
whereas in muscles of mastication elevators and starts undergoing contraction as the jaws elevate and and the depressors starts relaxing and exclusively we know that among the muscles of mastication the temporalis has the ability to retrude the mandible so especially the middle and posterior fibers of the temporalis muscle they contract to pull the mandible back condyle when returning on the slope at that time the superior lateral pterygoid undergoes contraction the reason is same to control the alignment of the disc in the front of the condyle whereas the superior retrodiscal lamina it starts undergoing relaxation and it maintain the contact tension against the forward pull of the muscle on the disc similarly when condyle it returns to the resting position at that time the superior lateral pterygoid it maintains a controlled contraction or a posterior contraction just to hold the disc forward above the condyle whereas the superior retrodiscal lamina is slightly taut just to prevent the disc from being rotated too far forward so both these structures are doing their roles superior retrodiscal lamina it prevents the excessive anterior displacement of the articular disc whereas the superior lateral pterygoid muscle it prevents the excessive posterior pull of the articular disc by the lamina now during closure the structures which contracts are elevators and superior lateral pterygoid muscles whereas the structures which relaxes are superior retrodiscal lamina depressors and inferior lateral pterygoid muscles now at the time of the opening of the jaw whenever condyle moves forward there is a vacuum created in the joint space as we can see in the first figure but we all know that closed joint system cannot tolerate vacuum so as the system cannot tolerate vacuum there is a shunting system present in the joint space which is called as glomus cell arteriovenous so this glomus cell arteriovenous shunting system whenever the condyle moves forward in that vacuum space this shunting system shunts blood in and out of the area to replace the volume of the condyle so this shunting system is called as vascular knee in the joint space so basically this vascular knee it prevents the creation of the vacuum in the joint space till the condyle returns back to the position i hope you all liked the video if you like the video please subscribe my channel akshay bandari's dental video we'll be back soon with the more such content thank you so much see you soon